Hello YouTube. This is uh, going to be an entire video dedicated to this man over here, Edward Leedskalnin, and that's that's him right there. So um, I'm going to go through a series of pictures with uh, Ed Leedskalnin's devices, and then at the end of the video, I'll show you guys um, my own device based on Ed Leedskalnin's principles. So here we go. This is at least coming at work. You see a giant uh, chunk of iron right there and uh, a hook dangling over the handle of his uh, flywheel. And there's the um, iron tube right there. Okay, here's a bunch of inductors, um, two bottles with clockwise and counterclockwise wound um, uh, wire some more transformers, transformer cores. So Edley Skelman was definitely um, uh, playing with electrical equipment and I mean there's no, no question about that. And um, he had some very unorthodox uh, techniques. So this is again his flywheel. Again I, I want to point out this, this tube right here. And um, I believe inside this tube he, he had an iron rod with a coil wound around it and this uh, this uh, top at attached to the uh, the giant chunk of iron that you saw earlier okay this is another this is his flywheel from a different um, angle so you can see inside of it this is just some random pictures from Edley Skelman okay that's his um, flywheel once again an inductor of his. Again, this is uh, one of his bottles. Notice this, it has uh, two layers of wire, clockwise and counterclockwise. You, this is uh, the theme of his um, technology, is this um, shorting out of coils. And um, see, he believed that from the positive terminal you would have magnetism sp spiraled out in one direction. And from from the negative terminal, you had uh, magnetism spiraling out in, in an opposite direction. So, and um, he believed in, in having a balanced system. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, this is more of his inductors. Okay, this is um, his flywheel, and somebody actually drew all the north and south poles on it. There's um, he had three layers of magnets. Each layer had 24 magnets, I believe. This is uh, from Ed Lee Scalman Museum. And um, next, I'm going to go into uh, Ed Lee Scalman's magnetic curve, and then I'll point out some things there. Okay, this is um, Ed Lee Scalman's magnetic current. It's a very short book. And it's uh, filled with his experiments uh, using magnetism and electricity. Uh, it's a it's a must read for 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 any of you um, guys. So I completely recommend it. It's, it's it presents an unorthodox view into electricity. So let's see. Here's uh, I wanted to show you page twelve. So um, here he describes what a magnetic current is, and um, Magnetic current is the same as the electric current. Current is the wrong expression. See, he believes that there's two currents, uh, one composed of north individual magnets and the other one composed of south individual magnets. And they're coming out in concentrated streams and they're running against each other. See, th again, this theme of um, clockwise and counterclockwise. Let's see, okay. So let's jump to page 28. Here is his um, perpetual motion holder. I'm sure you guys will recognize this. And um, he, he's uh, describing how to use it as a transformer. So you can use it as a transformer to light a light bulb. And um, so this uh, perpetual motion holder has many different uses, not just holding an iron bar. That was just uh, one of the uses for, for this perpetual motion holder. So let's jump to page 39. Okay, on this um, 
this is an important uh, page because he, he is actually talking about uh, how to improve magnetism, how to make coils more efficient. So he's talking about if you have um, a core that's larger, it's going to store more magnetism, or if you have more winds, that's going to store more magnetism. Well, those two are well understood, but here's his third um, w way to improve the system. Uh, he's talking about putting his coil inside of a tube. Uh, now, l remember he had um, a, a large tube right next to his rotor in the pictures that were shown earlier. So, um, I believe he had the, he had the coil inside there. And uh, next he's talking about attaching more iron to the top of the tube to store even more magnetism. So, um, Next, I'm going to go into my device that I, that I built on uh, Edlis Kalman's principle, and I'll, I'll show you some interesting uh, things there. Hello, YouTube. I apologize for the mess. I had to move uh, to the f to the floor from the washer and dryer because it's laundry day. So, um, when you look at this thing, you might you might ask yourself, what the heck is going on here? So uh, here's the schematic again. Um, I have the same power supply as in as in my other videos and I basically have the same pull pulse motor from my other video except I have only two magnets in there one north uh, facing out and one south facing out and then um, I have I have this thing over here it's basically a, a bunch of uh, soft iron uh, rods um, in, a, in a U shape just like here at the bottom, see. And um, those of you who uh, are familiar with Ed Lee Skelman, you might recognize this as his uh, perpetual motion holder. So this is a small version of a perpetual motion ho holder. On one side you have clockwise wound coil. On the other side you have counterclockwise uh, wound coil. But the, and the two co coils are shorted out in the middle, and then. Um, and then you have your AC across the shorted coils going to a bridge rectifier and then charging this tiny capacitor so you have your I have bridge rectifiers right there and there's my tiny little capacitor and as you can see it's charging the capacitor it's, it's not charging very fast because um, the coils aren't very large and I don't have very many lines in them as you can see they're pretty minuscule coils but what's ex extraordinary about this system is that it's a lens-free system. So the coils are shorted out. As uh, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm gonna un unplug everything, and then you will see that uh, the rotor. There's no no change in speed on the rotor. Okay, so I'm unplugging the load. See, I'm unplugging the AC side. Okay, now I'm, pl I'm plugging it back in. Look. Okay, I'm plugging back in. Unplugging. Plugging back in. So we're we're charging a capacitor, but there's no uh, extra extra torque uh, needed for the rotor to spin. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Plugging. Okay. I'm gonna unplug everything, and then I'll show you guys the um, how, how many volts we're actually getting. We're not getting very many volts. What? Uh, okay. Let's see. Going to remove the bridge rectifier from the system. Now the, the coils are always short, shorted with themselves. So let's see how many volts we're actually getting. Okay. Okay. Not okay. Let's see. So 0 0.2 volts AC. I mean that that doesn't seem like a lot. And if you uh, if you would have wired these coils in a conventional me method, w without them sh shorting, you'll be getting uh, twice as many volts. You'll be getting point, uh, around 0.4 volts. But you would have the lens uh, effect in, in play. So, so you you you'll need twice as much copper with this method as uh, with a regular method. But you'll be getting it's a lens-free system, you guys. So. Uh, I hope you're ex as excited as I am about this. Um, so okay, let's let's do some experiments. 
let's see. So unplugging the loads. As you can see, the coils are always shorted with themselves. So the the uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, short one coil short with the other, and the outside is connected to the outside there. And uh, okay, let's let's let, let's see. Uh, we're gonna unplug it. See, there's no change in the rotor. The rotor spins this uh, just as hard as it spun before. Okay, plugging back in, unplugging. So whether the coils are shorted or not shorted, the the, the rotor doesn't know. So th this this is uh, this this does display that there's no lens law in 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 play in this system. So basically, to get the system to self run, all you need is a bunch of these U cores and um, get a, get magnets to sp spinning between them, and uh, and that's it. You you can you can wire them up in series and you'll get a lot of power out without the lens uh, law. Uh, let's see, uh, I'm, okay, I'm gonna wire these uh, coils in in conventional way, way um, put the, and uh, I'll show you lens law in, in effect. Okay, um, I decided to show you the voltage just from a generate from a single coil. So I disconnected the counterclockwise coil and I left the clockwise coil. And across the leads um, I have a voltmeter. As you can see the voltage is 0.2 volts. Um, so it's the same voltage as we were getting when, when uh, in the Edley Scalman system when the two coils were uh, shorted out. So in Edley Scalman si system you need twice as much copper as you would in a, in a, in a conventional system to get the same amount of volts but the volts and amps you'll be getting uh, will be lens free so I mean uh, I think it's worth it because you're, you're getting you're gonna be getting um, work done with, without having to pay for anything and it's it's a key to a um, self-running system it's at least Kalman's gift to humanity I believe so um, Let's see. We're, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you that this is uh, lens low. Lens low at, at play on a single core uh, coil. So, um, okay, we have two leads. I'm gonna. Sh I'm gonna uh, short them out, and then um, we're gonna see this rotor slow down. Okay. So, okay. So here are the leads. Okay, we're gonna short them out. I uh, see the rotor slows down. So th th I'm showing you len again lens law uh, at play. See, so, yeah, what I'm doing is I'm shortening more. Okay, you guys. So I rewired this in a conventional method. So we have our clockwise coil. The beginning goes to the volt voltmeter, AC side. The end of the coil goes to the beginning of the um, counterclockwise coil. And then the end of the counterclockwise coil goes to vol voltmeter. As you can see, the coils are not shorted, not shorted. And we're getting twice as many volts as before. So we're getting 0.4 volts. This is a conventional uh, method. But uh, See the rotor is going, but notice what happens when we actually short these out. Okay, so again, okay, I'm, I'm going to short them out. Okay, I want you guys to see this. This is going to be lens law at play. So. So there is a drag on the system now. See the the coils know that they're shorted, and there's it's just like it's like putting the maximum load possible on the system, and it, it, the whole thing comes to a halt. So um, so the lo laws of conservation of energy were based on on uh, observation, and um, from systems where where you have lens law. Where there's a drag um, 
from so uh, there's an opposite force at play to to the that contracts the spin of the of the rotor so uh, if we have a lens free system that that means the laws of conservation of energy will have to be rewritten so you go, i hope you guys are excited as i'm about this anyway